Hello, my name is Miguel Mata, and this is the This Way Out podcast, a component of the This Way Out project. This podcast is my attempt to address a few topics that can be especially challenging for some, but hopefully in a way that speaks to the humanity in each of us. It's my attempt at being a source for positive messages in a time where such messages can be hard to find. Good morning. It's Monday, March 30th, 2020. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Are we still in quarantine? What day is today? It's not, for me right now, it's not, it's not Monday. I'm uh, recording this ahead of time, obviously, but we are still in the quarantine. We're still um, staying at home now. I think uh, at first we were like at uh, social distancing at six feet, and now we can't gather in um, groups of three or more. That's, that's in South Carolina, though. And, I mean, you can still hang out at home, you know. If we weren't able to hang out at home, I wouldn't be able to record this this current episode with my good friend, Lanier Brown. Say hello, Lanier. Hey, everyone. Lanier Brown, College of Charleston personal trainer. I brought him in on this episode um, because, you know, there's a few of us that are staying home and we're, you know, we're, what was the word? Sedentary? Sedentary. Right. We're more <laughs> sedentary, which means less active. Right, but there's much of us staying home, and we're a lot less active. And uh, my friend Lanier here is a personal trainer, and I just hoped that he could come in here and maybe share um, like two or three little uh, ways of, of uh, staying active uh, while you're having to be at home uh, and you don't have access to um, you don't have access to a, a, a gym or something like that. And you know maybe you want to do a little more than just walking around the block. So. Um, Lanier, you know, um, I know I didn't really give you that much of a heads up to, uh, you know, to, to be on the podcast, but, uh, if you don't mind, you know, do you have, do you have any, um, exercises or anything like that, that we could do at home, you know, using like the common stuff at home. I know you had a couple of things that you shared with me, um, a few months back that actually helped me with some, some stuff I was dealing with. Yeah. By all means, if you don't mind sharing. Well, the easiest thing is you take... The, the exercises that we do that will actually you do normally in a day. So like um, earlier I was talking to you about the chair squat. Liter- literally just sit, standing up and sitting down out of your chair without using your hands. Yeah, do that about 20 or 30 times in a row. You get a little winded. I mean, that's something simple that you can do. If you're Netflixing at home or Huluing or whatever, where you would normally have a commercial break, if you have that those advertisements pop up really quick do that you can do push-ups off the back of the couch you can you can actually do there's a lot of different things you can do you can get down on the floor and do a couple of crunches I mean especially with in a time where you're not gonna be leaving the house some of the simplest things are the are the things we grew up with right so and I mean being uh, sedentary means not getting 30 minutes of activity throughout your normal day. So if you think of 30 minutes of activity of what they say, break that up throughout the day. If you did 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there, that's 30 minutes. Which 30 minutes out of 24 hours a day that you're gonna be stuck at home should be very easy to find. Right, That uh, I can definitely vouch for that uh, chair squat. I have a lower back pain issue and you know i came to you you made that suggestion to me and yeah it's like it's um, i know it's not magic it's science (laughs) but it was almost like magic you know i did like 10 of those squats and then took a little break because like you said it does get you winded did like 10 more squats and it's like you said you know you don't you don't use your hands you don't brace yourself you just sit down stand up sit down stand up and you got to think those are the muscles that you use when you bend over and pick anything up too mm-hmm. so I mean doing those things those what, what we call uh, the the functional movements for oh. daily living doing those types of exercises are always going to be good for you they're always going to help you in doing what you would normally do okay so um, push-ups would you say push-ups in the back you can do push-ups like off the back of the couch I mean you don't have to go all the way down to the floor you just, or your the side of your couch or the back of a chair. Make sure your chair is braced really good. Or it could even be a countertop. 
but just do your push up and an incline. Mm -hmm. That way, if you're not good at them, that's that's where you're going to start anyway. Right. You're going to start at an incline because now you're not pushing up as much weight. Right. You can actually do the exercise. Right. And get an actual workout from it. Right. If I if you're not used to doing push-ups and you go straight to the floor to try and do push-ups, you do two and you're like, nope, I'm done. I am doing this again. You do 10, 10 or 15 off of your counter in the kitchen or whatever. Yeah. You know, hey, I did like 15. That wasn't too bad. Yeah. And you don't, and, and you're less likely, less likely to be discouraged. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally get that. You know, if you go, um, I'm trying to relate it to my own personal experience. Um, you ever been injured? Yeah. When you're trying to do something that you normally do after you get injured, yeah. it's that type of frustration. Right. It's the same type of frustration. Because you're always, you're like, I know I should be able to do this. But you can't. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Right. Well, um, okay, so there's chair squats. There's the push-up off the counter. You got... You got anything else? Crunches, like crunches. just on the floor, and that's crunches are, are not necessarily easy for anybody. So what's what's a good way to modify that? Maybe you know. Well, for... so here's the thing with a crunch. All right, a crunch is not a sit up. So sit ups are are extremely hard, and for some people they're actually really bad. A crunch is literally you can have your feet flat on the ground and your knees bent. You can have your feet on the top of a chair or something. But all you're doing is you're squeezing your core together and you're lifting your shoulders off of the ground. Right. It's, you're, you're not moving that far. But the focus is to squeeze uh, your abs and your core together while you're coming up. Right. So that's what's actually pulling your shoulder blades right. off the ground. So and it's uh, not that great of a movement. And, um, you know, folks can't see what you're doing, but it really is very little movement that you're demonstrating is that is just, it's, it is very little movement. Just basically taking your shoulder blades off the, gr off the ground, you know, uh, flexing that, that, that core, those abs and that core area, and then just coming back down and repeating that motion. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's pretty much, those, those three are probably the easiest ones I can think of off the top right. of my head. I mean, there's always planks, but planks also have issues with lower with people with lower back problems. It's harder to do them. Right. So I mean, but like those would be the three I'd go to and tell anyone that they could do. Right. So after that, uh, I'd have to look at it because you know right. it's it's one of those things you don't want to. You just you want to be active. So even if you just did those three, uh -huh. and say you did take a walk around the block, that should be more than enough. Right. I mean, and, and, and you know, 30 minutes and it's cumulative. So like I said, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there, 30 minutes. Um, so uh, I think those, I, those, don't sound, those don't sound like a big ask of, of anyone, you know, of, of, of various levels, you know, of, of, of uh, what is it? Physical ability, physical yeah, fitness. It'd be a physical ability. Right, physical ability. So, um, you know, uh, there was another thing that I, w I was hoping that you could share with us. I know that, that you're not exactly like nutrition science guy, but it's still an element of your of your uh, expertise. Right. And with you going to school in with exercise science, though, and actually graduating um, in a couple of months, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> What's your degree in? Exercise science, right? Yeah, exercise, yeah, science. exercise science. Congratulations, buddy. I was hoping that you might be able to share just a, a little bit of nutrition stuff, you know, like... Um, once again, we're talking about being sedentary, and I'm not even saying, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I, I keep I keep thinking like I'm saying cemetery, but yeah. it's not cemetery. It's sedentary. Like think, think of like the rocks, sedentary. Okay, yeah. Ah, yeah. rocks, they yeah. don't move much. Okay, <laughs> so sedentary. Okay, so anyway, you know, back on track here. Um, you know, we have to keep in mind like our, our nutrition, right? Because right. we're not burning off a lot of... Um, calories we're not using a lot of energy so you know what what kind of things you know and I know this is you know we kind of had this discussion earlier you know it's it's very when you talk nutrition it's very complex right so like is there anything that you any kind of advice that you could give it, on a general sense nutrition wise during this period you know when we're all kind of just hanging out at the house the first set of advice I would give is uh, start tracking keep a log and it's what you eat, the amount you eat. 
So if you have three slices of bacon, three slices of turkey bacon, two eggs, and and two pieces of toast at breakfast, write that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's easy. That's easy to track. But also keep track of how much water you drink during the day. Mm -hmm. Because drinking water is extremely important. Especially when you're not very active because you need to stay hydrated, you need to make sure you're drinking enough, and you may not feel thirsty because you're not actually being active. But <clears throat> the other thing I would say is, while they're good, I love them, stay away from starchy carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And I mean like, when I say that, I mean like potatoes, um, uh, pastas, and bread. And the reason, only reason being because you're not as physically active as you may have been mm -hmm. so your body is not going to need to use them in the same fashion so therefore you may actually start putting on weight because if you're eating those in large amounts large quantities your body's not burning off the extra for energy like it would have been right so um and then like always your good fats your healthy fats avocados oils nuts you know those stick with those I mean the best way the best way to monitor how you're doing especially when you can't get out and be very active is to make a log and then you can go and look it up if you if you really want to look it up you can look it up for yourself and see how much protein you're having how much fat you're having how many carbs you're having basically you can go online and go like the USDA's web page for choose my plate dot it's choose my plate dot go and you can look up the percentages that it says are within a healthy, respectable diet, which is says like 15 to 35 percent is supposed to be fats. Mm -hmm. There's a percentage gap. There's, it says in in this range, so you don't always have to be exactly on 15 percent or 35 percent. Mm -hmm. You know, 45 to 65 percent is supposed to be carbs. But as you as you write out your what you're eating you can look it up and see where it falls. Mm -hmm. And then you can also start to see if, hey, maybe I should change this out. Maybe mm -hmm. I should have this instead of that. You know, it's it gives you a lot more, I want to say freedom to actually look and choose your own diet. Right. And should really pay attention to how you're taking care of yourself. Plus also, one of the uh, things I was ta uh, talking to you about earlier, you don't want to be eating 4,000 calories a day. Right, right, yeah. If you're not, if you're only burning off 500 calories in a day, because activity trackers, it seems like everyone's got one now, and you can't, you can just, you know, you look on there, and so a lot of the apps they come with, like I know if you have a Fitbit app, you can go to the Fitbit app and put in your food, and it'll tell you where, based off of all of the stuff that you've put in, where you sit on how many calories you burned a day and how much you took in and where you're sitting on where you should be at. For people that's supposed to be like 1,500 to 2,000 calories a day anyway. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, those are just the easy things you can do. Right, so just so, you're, just so that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm tracking what, you're, what your suggestion is, is um, outside of the, the carbs, the starchy carbs, it's just, just being mindful of how many calories you're you're taking in because you're not burning off as much of energy you're not using as much energy and burning off those calories as usual because you know less activity right so I it's mean, important to stay on top of the, the calorie intake I mean let's let's be real quarantine snacking is real yeah I mean, like, you could you <laughs> yeah. could be like if you start keeping track of it yeah if you go to have those three Oreos, right. which turn into 10 Oreos right, right. later on. Right, you know, right. No actually, judgment, I've, I've been there. I mean, I'm, <laughs> hey, I, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that I won't do it, but I'm just saying you're more mindful of the fact that, right. oh man, I just ate a whole roll of Oreos. Yeah. That's not gonna be good for my diet. I mean, like I got three bo boxes of Triscuit with cheese at home, so right. that's gotta be very careful with that. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be awesome awesome well i you know what maybe you can either you know uh, um confirm or deny this little nugget but if i remember correct um according to the the uh physical health because uh, you know being an education major you know we have to do, to do a little bit on on physical education mm -hmm. um and nutrition and that sort of stuff and uh something that that we mentioned in a presentation one time was that 
you know, fibers, the uh, foods that are high in fiber, like broccoli, and I think green foods, greens, uh, green vegetables, um, nuts, uh, peanuts, almonds, that sort of stuff, especially almonds, you know, things that are high in fiber, they're more filling. Yeah. So you feel like you're full for that much longer. Yeah. So if you eat things that are high in fiber, um, that you you know you're less likely to snack. I can I can maybe. tell you. I, well, I can tell you. Um, a long time ago, when I got into a car accident, I couldn't work out, and so I had to actually go see a nutritionist. And one thing that they told me, and this was specifically, they were like, if you get hungry before you go to bed, eat a granola bar with at least five grams of fiber. Yeah. And the reason why is because they said. You'll go to bed. It'll you'll feel full, but also something about it. it since it helped me um, go to bed feeling full, even though I hadn't had that much, after I woke up, I was like, I was actually hungry because I was like, okay, I, I need to put some fuel in. So mm -hmm. that may help with other people. But yes, fiber is good because it helps you feel 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 full. Right, and hopefully deter that feeling of. Of snacking, right. of needing to snack. All right. Well, Lanier, man, I, I appreciate you. Be, I appreciate you uh, helping me out today. Yeah. And um, you know, uh, we paid Lanier with food, so he's been paid. He's, he's being compensated for his time and his and his knowledge. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna have to work that off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's and uh, good, you know, the Lanier's always been a good friend, and, and he's he's. I appreciate him helping me out again. You know, with this project, I always, always greatly appreciate it. Hey, folks. Um, you know. I, I really, really think that uh, we're going to be out of this real soon. And, um, you know, even if we're not, if we still got a little bit longer, you know, you guys just be mindful of your, be mindful of your head spaces, right? Stay, be mindful of, of um, or, or do your best. I'll say it that way. Do be, do your best of being mindful of, of how you're spending your time and who you're spending your time with. Uh, because um, in these days of abnormal isolation phases, we, our, our thoughts can have a tendency to, to slide into the negative and to some and you can you know and that that can be that can be trouble for some of us so just be mindful of that stuff you know and um you know that that awareness it can help you you know get yourself back into calmer water so just that's that's one my, my last little nugget for this for this episode i want to want to let you guys know as as i always do that i'm super proud of you guys i think uh, i think everyone out there is doing an outstanding job and and uh, we're going to be you know we're going to get through this and we're going to be okay so um, thanks again to Lanier. Thanks again for helping me out, buddy. Um, do you have any anything anything you're pushing, like a, a project of your own that you're pushing? Not yet. Uh, not yet. Not yet. I'll let you know when it gets underway. Okay. I, got, I still I still have te certification tests to study for that I don't know when I'm going to be able to take. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. All right. So so stay tuned when when Lanier's when Lanier gets off the ground, we'll start pushing his stuff on on this project too. Um, you guys take care, God bless, and we'll talk to you again on Thursday. This has been the This Way Out Podcast, a part of the This Way Out Project. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to hear future episodes, please subscribe. If you would like to get in touch with me to recommend future topics, provide feedback, or for any other reason, you can comment on the episode or send me an email at thiswo.light at gmail.com. That's T-H-I-S-W-O dot L-I-G-H-T at gmail dot com. If you're interested in the other aspects of the This Way Out project, be sure to visit my website at thiswo-light dot com. <laughs>